Hello gang, welcome back to the office. I'm recording this on Friday, July 2nd. So happy 4th of July for everybody, 2021. We're a little more free this year than last year. And uh, this is volume two, two of your BVI Charter questions answered. I've had a lot of questions thrown at me over the last month and a half. And so what I've done is I filtered through and got the best ones, things, questions that I think you guys will really want to hear and you'll want to hear the answers. The charter business is really warming up now. I am headed to the BVI. I get to try an Aquila 54 footer this time in August. Me and seven of my best friends, including the old wife, I shouldn't have said old wife, the, the beautiful wife, are all going <laughs> out uh, to the BVI and are going to spend seven days on that 54 footer and I cannot wait to get back and report to you guys and show you a video of our trip. As long as the weather holds, it is hurricane season, but eh, what the heck. Let's go out and party, right? By the way, as I record this, the COVID restrictions at BBI have loosened somewhat if you're vaccinated. I am vaccinated, so what happens for me is, is I, have, I do have to take a COVID test 48 to 72 hours or something like that before I enter the BVI, uh, which is easy to do now, obviously. And then when you get to the BVI, you show proof of that, you're, you're set free. You don't have to do another COVID test the entire time you're there. You don't have to quarantine. You're set free and ready to go. The only other thing you got to do, obviously, is to get back into the States. You got to take another COVID test, which there are several places. They even have a service that will come to your charter and they will administer the test to you there and then you upload it to Verify. Verify is an app that the airlines are using these days for you to verify your negative COVID test as you come back into the United States. All right, let's get straight to the questions. We're sailors, but we are getting tempted to look into a power cat. Generally, are they more expensive or less expensive to charter than a sailboat? I'm not talking about the fuel, which understandably will be more than a sailboat but just the actual boat, more or less, or the same. We're enjoying your videos, reminiscing a bit, and excited to get back to the Willie T again. Well, who's not excited to get back to the Willie T for crying out loud? Jumping and drinking are the two best things on the planet. So anyway, I looked into this. Uh, power cats are, are far more expensive. I mean, even more than 100% more. It's just the way it is. Sailboats are simple and easy. The engines are very small, as you know. But in any case, I just typed in seven days in the BVI in September and I picked out an appropriate boat which would hold eight people and the quote I got back from Moorings was $5,000 for the sailboat and $12,815 for the power cat. So you can see a significant bump, but it just depends on what it is you like doing. If you are a sailor and you love the calm quietness of sailing around, then you're going to get off cheaper. If you like vroom vroom and getting there a little quicker and having uh, fun doing it, then you're going to pay a little bit more. But still, $12,000 for four couples, four adult couples for a week, that's not that bad, especially what you're going to get at the BVI, right? I just think it's very well worth it. And that was for a 51 footer at Moorings, by the way. Here's another one piggybacking on price. I used to live near Marine Max in St. Pete. I love the Aquila boats. I'd love to charter a 44 or their new sexy as hell 54. You bet it's sexy as hell. What is the cost for two weeks with a Marine Max boat, let's say a 44 footer? Well, I don't know really. I'm guessing here. I think the 44 footer is generally around the $10,000 mark for a week. So just double it. So somewhere between 18 and $20,000. I know the 54 that I'm going on is uh, retailing at around 16, 17,000 for the week. I got a better price because I'm a friend, but I think that's kind of where, where it hovers at the moment. Great channel. Thank you. What months do you find to be the best for warm and calmer water? Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's all kind of good to me. I, I, you know, it's always warm. Obviously, it's a little warmer in the summer than it is in the winter. However, the weather is just more calm in the winter, right? January through April, May is going to be your calmest time of the year. The water is going to warm up more in the summer. I've been in June and July, no problems whatsoever. It was beautiful. Sometimes the waves get a little more choppy in the summer than they do in the spring, but it's not that big of a deal. Like I said, we're going in August, which is hurricane season. So um, we're probably going to see more rain, but I don't know that we're going to see any more choppy water. It just depends on what's coming in. Obviously, if something's flying our way in a big circle going like this, we just won't go. But uh, so that's, that's kind of the deal. I mean, it's generally calmer in the spring. 
Here's a really good question. I just stumbled upon your channel last night. Excellent info. What would be a couple of tweaks you might make if a guy was looking for a bit less partying and a couple quieter spots to replace the party spots? He's referring to a video I did about a seven day itinerary in the BVI linked below. All my BVI videos will be linked below. You can go find them. And you know, it's as I, it's Foxy's, it's Soggy Dollar Bar, it's the Willie T. So he's kind of looking at that as partying, which it kind of is. Depends on how, what level of partying you want to do is up to you. But what I said back to him was, look, just keep the same itinerary and don't party. It's like, for example, at Foxy's, they have a wonderful barbecue and wonderful food. So just go there for the food. And when all hell breaks loose, just go back to your boat, right? You don't have to party. The Soggy Dollar Bar in White Bay is the same thing. You're going to see a lot of people drinking, a lot of inebriated people and what have you. But you're also going to see people who just sit on the beach and relax and don't drink at all. That's up to you, right? That's up to you. So you just decide whether or not this is going to be a partying BVI trip or just a relaxing BVI trip. Watched all three parts. Incredible footage. He's referring to... Uh, the BVI videos I did uh, about a year and a half ago with my kids. Uh, there's three parts, again, linked below. My family is planning the exact trip in June. I'm curious to know, were you able to stay connected to cell service or did you have a satellite box? We're taking a Nautitech 47 out for a week, but any tips on things we might need for the trek would be appreciated. I've never had one problem with cell service out in the BVI. Anagata gets a little spotty sometimes, but I have AT&T and it has worked beautifully everywhere I've been in the BVI. Uh, what you want to request is Wi-Fi. Uh, it doesn't come normally on the boat. You have to request it. It's about $150, $200 for the week. Plug you up a little thing in there that's uh, it's kind of cell service to Wi-Fi. It works slowly, but it does work, right? So it's up to you if you want to go that extra route there. Here's a generator question. I've been running a Class A motorhome and do my best to minimize the generator usage when I'm camping to avoid the noise and disruption to the rest of the campers. Do you others in the mooring fields run generators at night? Find that you need your AC at night or is it cool enough to be comfortable without AC? I be loving my air conditioning. You know, I just do. And I think most people do. I find that sailors generally don't like air conditioning and people on power cats do. I don't know what it is. It's just a, it's the way everybody thinks, right? When I am not in a marina somewhere, my generator is running 24 hours a day, plain and simple, because I like air conditioning. I also like everything electronically working. So sometimes when you turn the generator off and you're not plugged into shore power, some things you don't want to pull too much because some things just aren't going to work like blow dryer, never plug in a blow dryer. If uh, unless you've got your generator on or, or you're plugged in, that will not work. And no, everyone in the mooring field has their air conditioner and generators running and it bothers no one. These generators are really quiet. They're in the, in the uh, engine room, one of the, one of the engine rooms, and they're extremely quiet. If you're sleeping right above it, you can kind of hear it hum, but that just puts me to sleep. I don't know about you. So run your generator all you want. It's a charter boat, right? Just run it. It's going to cost you more in gas, obviously, not that much more, but a little bit. So I'm planning a charter with the family. If you had to choose for first timers, which islands would you choose to charter first? We have good boating yacht experience, just not in the Caribbean. Well, I guess he's referring to, we, does he, do we go to the BVI, the US Virgin Islands, the Bahamas? or I, I just think the BVI, as everyone who's watching this video will agree with, it's just a great place to do your first time because the traveling from one island to other is very minimal but fun. And then when you get to that island, each island has its own identity and personality and there's so much to do there. And it's just so amazingly original and so Caribbean. It's just obviously the, the, the best way to go. As a native of the BVI, very well done. My only correction would be the pronunciation of Saba Rock. It's Saba. That's how we say it. I apologize to the inhabitants of the BVI for mispronouncing the beautiful, beautiful little island of Saba Rock. How about a Bahamas tutorial, seven to 10 day vacay for us newbies? Absolutely, guarantee you that'll be my next video. Uh, we'll get into the Bahamas. That's a whole nother world. It's a completely different vacation, but charters are actually starting to boom there as well. So if you're a fan of the BVI, you're gonna wanna do the Bahamas too. Like I said, it's a different trip, but 
equally as fantastic. So that'll be next time. I promise I'll do that. And by the way, also next time you see me, I will be on the 54, the Aquila 54 and the BVI, and we'll punch out a few videos about that one as well. So exciting things to come. Have a great 4th of July. See you guys next time.